Gentlemen, uh, thank you again for your service to our country. Uh, General Conway, um, what do you see as the primary force protection uh, challenges in Afghanistan right now? And do you ha does the Marine Corps have everything it needs in Afghanistan? Yes, sir. I think it's fair to say that we, we do have everything that we need. That, that, of course, has been my number one priority since I've been in this job, is to make sure those troops, especially at the point of the spear, have, have everything they need. That said, uh, we, we push industry for more. And, and, and by that, I'm talking about personal protective equipment in particular uh, that is more lightweight and would not be as burdensome as some of the pictures you've probably seen coming out of Marja, 80 to 100 pounds on the backs of some of our Marines carrying their sustainment load and, and the things they need to, to, to work 24-7. We need a helmet that'll stop 762. Right now, the biggest threat in Marja is not necessarily the IEDs for our killed in action. It is the sniper that can take a long-range shot and can penetrate our protective equipment, particularly the helmet. So we continue to pound the table on that with hopes that uh, one day we'll have that piece of gear in hand. Thank you. Um, General Conway, uh, are you confident that the EFV will provide adequate protection against IED threats? Um, how has the program been modified to counter this threat? So it's an interesting question uh, because just in the last couple of days, uh, we have completed blast tests uh, with the EFV uh, as compared to an MRAP, an R33, which is actually the mid-level uh, CAT-2 MRAP, I was very pleasantly surprised uh, at how well it, it uh, progressed. I mean, uh, about the same for underbody explosions uh, and for underwheel or under track explosions, but actually the EFV was markedly better uh, against direct fire and indirect fire. I I'll get you a copy of that study. Uh, and, and by the way, I would asterisk it by saying, because the report did, this is before we apply modular armor that we would want to incorporate if we were in an IED-rich environment. Uh, thank you, General Conway. Sure. Uh, General Conway, um, was his decision to delay the EFE's uh, low-rate production in fiscal year uh, 2014 to 2015 based on technology development concerns, or was it budget-driven? Uh, Congressman, I would say it was, it was probably a combination of both. Uh, we have seven new vehicles that, that are paid for and are going to be arriving in the, in the test beds uh, throughout the, the, the spring and summer. Uh, there's some KPs, uh, knowledge points that we have to go through with those vehicles to determine uh, what our full rate production needs to be, to determine if they're going to be past the reliability concerns that they've had in the past. Uh, and I think, uh, in, in fairness, uh, the Secretary of the Navy and the Secretary of Defense wanted us to have some of the answers to those issues before we got into a, a, a full uh, rate of, of buy-in procurement. Sure. General Conway, uh, how do you plan to in integrate the uh, uh, MATV and the MRAP vehicles uh, into your current tactical wheeled vehicle fleet uh, management program? Well, sir, we, uh, we see future value in, in, again, the smallest of the MRAPs, the CAT ones, and now the MATVs, which is in some ways a replacement for the Up Armored Hummer, with regard to our, our combat engineers, our road clearance debts, perhaps some other small units. But as was answered earlier, in some ways it goes against who we are as a fast and, and relatively light expeditionary force. So we're going to, we're going to preserve them, uh, keep them available. So if we get into another static environment like this in the future, that we'll have those vehicles available. Uh, but again, a small percentage of them will be incorporated, I think, into the TE of, of some of our uh, support battalions. General Conway, looking at the um, uh, shipbuilding plan, uh, do you have any concerns? Uh, about um, the forced entry requirement uh, in terms of amphibious capability? Uh, sir, the CNO, uh, under the uh, observance of the Secretary of the Navy, have agreed that 38 is the requirement. Uh, we have said that we must be willing to accept risk down to about 33 ships. Uh, and if you look at the 30-year shipbuilding plan, it'll sort of run highs and lows between that uh, 30, and, and, and I think we get as high as 36 in the out years. But we also need other parts of the fleet to be equally strong. You know, we want those, uh, those surface craft out there that give us uh, the force protection shield. We want the support of the aircraft carriers if we need their, their aviation strike capacity. And we want the subs out at distance uh, screening the whole of the effort. So we need a strong and balanced fleet, I think. Uh, more amphibs is always better, uh, but we understand the fiscal pressures that we're dealing with today. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank the gentleman. Uh, looks like our